Exercise 7b, dilations and reflections. Reflections just means swapping the coordinate or the uh, function either upside down or side to side. Dilations is all about stretching and squashing a graph. The terminology that we use for dilations can be a little bit confusing, so it's worthwhile going through what the definitions mean. The first one is a dilation from the x-axis. So if you can imagine we've got our Cartesian plane, the x-axis, as you know, is the horizontal graph. So if I'm, strict, if I'm dilating from the x-axis, from the x-axis, which of the values are going to get affected if I'm going from the x-axis? Well, that's all the y's. So all the y values will get affected from a dilation from the x-axis. So when we do our little notation, as you can see in the top left there, that x, y, arrow, x, b, y, that is, uh, we put whatever factor we're dilating from next to the y's, because that's how much it's being dilated by. So, for example, the notation there is suggesting it's a dilation by factor of b from the x-axis. For the next one here, a dilation uh, of, from a factor for the y-axis, you'll notice here we've got a dilation by a factor of a from the y-axis. Well, from the y-axis, from the y-axis, I'm stretching from the y-axis. Well, that's going to be affecting all the little a's on the horizontal axis. So, because I'm stretching from the y-axis. So, therefore, whatever factor I'm dilating from, it's going to be affected by putting that little number next to the x. And this will often throw a lot of people around. Um, so, just be aware, those are, this is the main mechanical difference between dilations and translations in this regard. As a follow-up from this, the a reflection in the x-axis and a reflection in the y-axis. Well, a reflection in the x-axis is my x-axis. If I've got, say, my little sticky tape in the x-axis here, there's my little horizontal axis. If I'm doing a reflection in the x-axis, what they'll do is I'll move my little sticky tape down to the bottom. So therefore, it's affecting the y-coordinate or the y-ordinate for that particular bit of sticky tape. If, however, I'm doing a reflection in the y-axis, so there's my vertical axis here, there's my sticky tape here, what it's going to do is it's going to be a reflection in the y-axis, it's going to go over here. So it's going to affect where the x-ordinate of my little sticky tape is. And we will do that accordingly here. But let's go and do a couple of examples and let's just see this in action. Example 7b.1. Find the image of the point 72 after a reflection in the x-axis. We can do this visually and then systematically as well. There is my coordinate 7, 2. A reflection in the x-axis means I'm going to be flipping it upside down. The x-ordinate would stay the same, but if I'm flipping it directly upside down, it's going to become negative 2. We can also do this by doing a systematic a series of transformations. We start with the usual xy, transforms into, now we're doing nothing to the x's here, so I'm just going to leave that as x. We are going to transform the y's, and so therefore, there is our transformed set of coordinates. B, a reflection in the y-axis. As again, we have just simply moved that point to the other side uh, of the y-axis. It becomes negative 7, 2. C, a dilation of factor 4 from the x-axis. So it's from the x-axis. It's going to affect the y-values. So I've multiplied the, the dilation factor of 4 is when I multiply the y value by 4. So the y value originally was 2. So 2 times 4 gets me 8. A dilation of factor 4 from the y-axis. Well, you could possibly hazard a guess that this will mean I'm putting a 4 next to the x rather than next to the y. And so my new coordinates will be 28 and 2. 
So again, reminders that our dilation from a factor, uh, factor four from the x-axis, so it's from, so I'm taking the original point, that seven, two, taking that two and stretching it up by, a fact, by four times the amount. Whereas if I'm dilating by a factor of four from the y-axis, I'm stretching up this way, it's a, from the y-axis. So the seven, I'm going, stretching it all the way up. Four times what it was originally, so all the way up to 28 and two. Example 7b.2, write down the equation of the image obtained. So the image, remember, means the transformed the final transformed equation obtained by the graph of y equals square root of 2x transformed by each of these uh, different transformations. I'm just going to work left to right for each of these. So I'm going to start with a dilation of factor one half from the y-axis. So we've got the dilation of factor one half from the y-axis here. So I've just put a one half next to that x, as you would see. Uh, the y's, there's nothing happening to the y's yet, so I'm just leaving that alone. So much like you might remember from our examples so from uh, 7a, I'm going to make a transformation statement. So the transformed x is going to equal to one half of the original. So what we want to do is we want to go and substitute accordingly into the original equation. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by two or divide by a half and then substitute. So every time I've seen x, I've just trans... Uh, copied it with the transformed version. And that's going to look like, like so. A dilation of factor four from the x-axis. Well, remember this is going to be the opposite now. So that's the dilation of factor four from the x-axis. And I'm going to make a transformation statement. And now I just need to go and substitute that transformed uh, transformation statement that has been rearranged uh, uh, such that the original y is the uh, subject into the original equation. And there's my final equation. Let's have a look at the next ones. A dilation of factor five from the y-axis and a reflection in the x-axis. I've put my correct statements now in there, and now I just need to make my transformation statements. And now I just need to do my substitutions. And then we just write our final equations. And there's our final equations. A dilation of factor two thirds from the x-axis and a reflection in the y-axis. And now to make our transformation statements. And now for our substitutions. And then we write our final equations. And there's our systematic approach to being able to do dilations and reflections.